They asked me uh, if I wanted to go in fighter command or a bomber command. And he said, oh, but of course, you know, fighter command, there's six months waiting. Boy, six months. At 20 years old, you don't want to wait six months. Usually if you got coned with searchlights, you, you didn't get out of the cone, and that was the end of you. You were completely blinded. We tried everything to get out of the cone. We dove, we climbed, we slipped here and there. I worked at a factory in Amherst, and they built the Avril Anson. I'd say about the, the third year into the war, when we started to feel the pins, you go to the to, to those soup kitchens, you get a spoonful of mostly soup. And if you ever seen a rotten potato, try to eat that. As you are approaching the target, bomb aimer pretty well takes over control of the aircraft. He's lying down on his stomach, tells the pilot to go a bit left a little bit right. Finally, he says, steady. When you first get overseas, you go down to Bournemouth, and that's a great place for a young guy. Dance halls and pubs, oh. Just to sit there and to listen to everything that they have to say, you know, you get attached to these people. Each one of them has played an important role in our history. To be able to make an emotional connection with the person to tell future generations, that is a really cool thing. You have two generations facing each other. On one side, a generation that lived through bombings and had to go to war. On the other side, a generation that's holding an iPhone and has everything at its fingertips. I think we have a lot to learn from these men and women. We need to pay attention to what they're telling us. To them, we pledge to carry their torch and never forget, we will remember them. <laughs>